Hello everyone. Today we are going to do a problem based on slender columns. In this question, the data is given very clearly. The size of the column is given. The effective length is given. The unsupported length is given. The factored load PU is given. Factored movement about the major axis and minor axis are given. FCK and FI are given. Also, a condition is given. Column is bent in double curvature and reinforcement is distributed equally on all the four sides of the section. The first step is to check if the column is short or slender. From this codebook, we can take these two formulas. In this problem, the effective length in respect of the major axis and minor axis are same which is 6600 millimeter B and D are given in the question for both of these we are getting a value greater than 12 so it is a slender column now we need to find additional eccentricities we need to open SP16 table number 1 it is in the page number 106 for LE upon D we have got 12.45 12.45 comes between 12 and 13 for 12 EAX upon D is 0 0.072 and for 13 it is 0 0.085 now using interpolation for 12.45 we will get 0 0.078 we know the value of D 530 so for the eccentricity EAX we will get 41.34 millimeter now let us take LE upon B we have got 14.66 it comes between 14 and 15 so we need to take these two values for 14.66 we will get 0 0.108 we know the value of B 450 for EAY we will get 48.6 millimeter. Let us assume that the percent of steel is 3.2. We have to open SP16, page number 148. There we can see the chart number 63. Here we have the percentage. This point is 3 and this point is 3.2. At 3.2, we have to make a horizontal line there are three inclined lines we have to check which line represents our fi 500 this is the line representing fi 500 so this horizontal line should be extended up to this line we will get this point then here there are four lines we have to check which line represents our fck 25 this is the line representing 25 so from this point we have to make a vertical line up to that line we will get this point from this point we have to make a horizontal line here we can see PUZ upon AG this point is 20 this point is 21 this point is 22 and this point is 23 so PUZ upon AG is 23. We are dividing that by 1000 because we want the final answer in Kilo Newton. AG is the gross area. We know 530 into 450. For PUZ, we will get 5485 Kilo Newton. Let us assume the effective depth D dash as 50. For D dash upon D, we will get 0.094. We can round that to 0 0.1. For D dash upon B, we will get 0 0.111. That also we can round that to 0 0.1. We have to take chart number 60 from SP16. Our section is rectangular. So we have to copy this formula. We need to find K1 and K2. For rectangular section, when D dash upon D is 0 0.1, K1 is 0 0.207.
from this table we can find k2 our section is a rectangular in the question it is given that on all the four sides equal reinforcement is provided our fy is 500 and d dash upon d is 0 0.1 in this case k2 is 0 0.425 the percentage of steel we know 3.2 fck is 25 for p upon fck we will get 0 0.128 in this we can apply these three values d is 530 and b is 450 for pbx we will get this we can convert this into kilo newton so we need to divide that by thousand and we can approximately write as 1558 kilo newton for d dash upon d and d dash upon b we have got a same value in this case pbx and pby will be same now we have to take this code book open the page number 72 from that we can copy this puz we have calculated pu is given in the question 1600 PB just before we have calculated for KX and KY we will get 0 0.99 previously we have calculated MUX and MUY with MUX we have to multiply KX and with MUY we have to multiply KY we know that KX and KY are same we have calculated these two movements we have to add one more movement with this let us see how to do that. The factored movements are given in the question. Now in this code book we can open the page number 72. In the case of a braced column without any transverse loads occurring in its height, the additional movement shall be added to an initial movement equal to sum of 0.4 mu1 and 0.6 mu2 where mu2 is the larger end movement and mu1 is the smaller end movement mu2 is the larger end movement that is 45 with that we have to multiply 0.6 mu1 is the smaller end movement that is 30 with that we have to multiply 0.4 mu1 is the smaller end movement we know that it is assumed to be negative if the column is bent in the double curvature in the question it is given that the column is bent in the double curvature that is why here negative sign comes when we calculate this we will get 15 there is one more condition in no case shall the initial moment be less than 0.4 mu2 mu2 is 45 0.4 into 45 it is 18 we have to take the maximum value 18 is the maximum in the similar way we can do for the minor axis we will get 13 then we have to multiply mu2 with the 0.4 we will get 14 we have to take the maximum value 14 is maximum so we have to take that one more time we have to find the movements using the eccentricity then we have to take the maximum value let us see how in this code book we have to open page number 42 we can write the formula for minimum eccentricity the unsupported length upon 500 plus lateral dimensions upon 30 and subjected to a minimum of 20 in these two we have to take the maximum value so for ex minimum we will have this for ui minimum we will have this now we can find these two movements using this formula pu we know 1600 to convert millimeter into meter we are dividing that by thousand in the previous step we have calculated these two we have to compare these two and these two we have to take the greater movements these two are greater than these we have to proceed with these two movements previously we have calculated max and may to get a new mux we need to add these two and to get a new MUY, we need to add these two. In this way, we will get these two movements. Now, we are going to apply the check for safety. From SP16, 
we have to take chart number 48 because our FY is 500 and D dash upon D is 0.1 and reinforcement is distributed equally on the four sides. PU upon FCK BD is 0.27 and P upon FCK is 0.128. We have this in the Y axis at 0.27 we have to make a horizontal line approximately P upon FCK is 0.128 this curve is for 0.12 and this curve is for 0.14 0.128 comes in between both of them so approximately between these two curves we have to draw a vertical line in the X axis we have this this point is approximately equal to 0.19. Now we can find MUX1 and MUY1. For both of them it will be 0.19 because we have 0.1 in both of the axes. There will be a small difference in the formula. For MUX1 it will be BD square and for MUY1 it will be DB square. For MUX upon MUX1 we will get this. For MEY upon MEY1, we will get this. For PU upon PUZ, we will get this. Now we have to take the chart number 64. For this, we have got point 2. From point 2, we have to make a horizontal line. PU upon PUZ is a point 0.29. This line represents point 3. We can approximately keep point 0.29 as point 3. So this line should be extended up to this line. Then we have to make a vertical line. This is for MUY upon MUY1. For that we will get approximately 0.87. From the calculation we have got 0.25. Since it is more than this, the section will be safe. That means the assumed area of the steel is enough. The section is safe. Now we can find the AST 3.2 upon 100 into D into B. We will get this. Using trial and error method, we can find the diameter and number of bars. Let us provide 16 number of 25 millimeter diameter bars. We are going to keep the diameter of lateral ties as 8 millimeter at 300 millimeter spacing here you can see the reinforcement details now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video